We are having some fun this holiday season, creating some fun stocking stuffers. Welcome to another day of the 12 days of Christmas crafting. We're going to create the Tic Tac Snowman, bigger and better than ever. I have created this in the past. It's a real go-to craft for me. And this time I just had a, a slightly different size Tic Tac and I wanted to make a big old hat. I already had this fun holly. I've had it forever in my box of crafty goodness and I wanted to make a hat big enough to hold my holly, even though you can cut holly out with your scan and cut. I had this cute ribbon. So what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to create this Tic Tac Snowman from start to finish. You're going to learn how to create the shapes from built into the machine. This is all built into the machine. See how it works? You're going to be able to make circles and weld them together. Then you're going to be able to make a circle for the middle to show where the Tic Tacs are, to show the Tic Tacs coming through, the exact size you need. You'll even have an extra cute little scallop shape that you can use for, you know, an, a little like tag for somebody. Write their name on it, put it on the back, or you could put let it snow or something like that. You just keep those extra shapes. And then something different, and even though I've done this tutorial in the past, and those of you who have taken my courses have one of these in your course, I decided to create the hat today. I thought it would be fun to make the hat right from the machine. Start to finish, everything's from the machine. I see you're coming in and saying hello. I just want to tell you what we did on the first day of Christmas crafting. We created this hanging ornament box. If you missed it, check out the first day of Christmas crafts on my YouTube channel, or it'll be at the end of this, I'll show you those boxes in a little better detail. Not how to make them. I'll just show you the boxes in better detail. And then you can go back to that. There'll be a playlist for the 12 days of Christmas crafting. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna just go home. Now you can also, after I teach you how to do this, I'm gonna go and turn off my overhead light. I'll turn it back on later to show you my, my Tic Tac Snowman. But after you do this, you're going to be able to save this and use this pattern over and over again. And even if you've done it before, you might not have done it in this size. So that's always fun. All right, so we're gonna start with the very beginning. If you're brand new to the scan and cut, you, it's the, I'm using the SDX 125. If you don't already have a scan and cut, please use my link in the description of this video is my Amazon store where I do earn affiliate commissions. So just go to my Amazon storefront and I also put a link just now, it should be there by now, to how to get these in bulk. A case of Tic Tacs, way cheaper than you can get them at the checkout counter at the end of, you know, when you're checking out the impulse items. So now if you do have a scan and cut, you can follow along with any model you have, any model you want, but it just it might look slightly different the way the buttons are. So if you're using an, a CM model, you're gonna have to set your blade depth and I'll get to that later. But any, anyhow, no matter what machine you have, you're gonna turn it on and you're gonna see pattern and scan. And you're gonna select pattern because we're gonna be using the built-in patterns to create this snowman. First thing we're gonna do is get two circles and I'm gonna repeat myself a lot, so no trolls out there. I'm just gonna, um, you know, just tell you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm, I'm repeating myself on purpose. We're gonna get a circle. We're gonna go in here and get a circle. Scroll down, scroll down. Okay, so the, the circle we're gonna get is called BA-A045. There are different kinds of circles, but this one is concentric, perfectly concentric. So that's the one we want. We're gonna get it again later and just go ahead and resize it at this point. Because I'm using the Tic Tacs that are, let me, let me just go to this one here. Yeah, point, I just gotta tell you, these Tic Tacs are like less than an ounce, right? So we need the one, this is, I needed to make a bigger Tic Tac snowman than I made last time, because my first snowman didn't hide, it didn't cover up my Tic Tacs. So anyway, I'm just going down in size here to 3.25. So this, the bigger circle is three and a quarter, 3.25. There you go. Now, if it was, if you didn't want to make this a circle and you were trying to make it an oval, this is what this button is for. This means that when you change one value, they don't change in proportion to each other. We're gonna go back, right? We, we don't, so keep that, keep that in mind if you want to take, take something and not keep it in the same proportions, you can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, or set. So now we have a circle, the first circle for our project. So now you could either, one of two options, you can either edit this and duplicate it and resize the second one, or just for practice and like to repeat myself, I'm gonna go add pattern, shapes, 
because I want you to get used to this because some of you are new to the scan and cut and you might be like, I, I want to follow along. So I'm giving you practice. There you go. BA-A045 and you get a second one. Okay, and you can resize it right here. And the second one is going to be two and a half. Okay, so two, oops, 2.5 or two and a half. These measurements will be in the description later on tonight. I'm going to say by midnight, just to give myself a timeline. Midnight East Coast time. I'll put these numbers in the description of this video along with the settings. So there you have two circles. Now, you want to make a snowman. And if you were to, let's just explain this right now. Say you were to put these there. Like, this is the best way to explain it. So you make your snowman and you're like, oh, that's cool. It's going to cut out a snowman for me. No, if you do it like this, it will actually not cut out the snowman like I have here. It will end up cutting out one shape, two shape, and it'll even cut a third shape where these two shapes overlap. You want to weld these shapes together. So the, the what I like to do is I like to put one here. These are these are inch marks. This is the this is a representation of your mat. And I like to overlap this by about a half an inch. So if this is an inch mark from here to here, take your circle and overlap it by half an inch. And don't worry about centering it because we're going to do that ourselves. Okay, overlap it like so. Now you're going to go to edit and you're going to go to the selection tool and just hit this button here. This button here means select everything that's on the mat right now. Now, if I see anybody say, please slow down, I will slow down, but I know you, a lot of you are my diehard brother scan and cut users. So I'm going to see, I'm going to watch for your feedback if you say to slow down. Now, what I've done, the reason I needed to select them both is because I want to align them. And if I, I'm going to align them, it might not look like I need to align them, but we're professional crafters here. We're going to go to object edit and we're going to use the alignment tool and we're going to align them vertically. Don't worry if you miss this because I would, I'm going to align this little guy later, this little circle again later. So don't worry, we'll be using this alignment tool again. I'm aligning them in relation to each other vertically. If you, When you watch these little crosshairs, you can see them maybe slightly changed and maybe not, but that, they're now aligned vertically. Now at this point, because it's going to look really good, we can now weld them. This button here is weld. You can't undo this on the machine. If you were using Canvas Workspace, you can undo this, but in the machine, we're welding them and it's just going to make them into one shape. Pretty cool. Okay. So let's, it, let's now look at that. We got a cool snowman. So fun. Now we're going to make the center for the snowman. But before we do that, let's just go over this part. So the, before, it's my measurements. You need two of these. And we want them to be exactly the same size because the one in the back is not going to have the hole for the Tic Tacs. Unless you want to have a hole for the Tic Tacs. In that case, ignore this part. I'm only going to put the hole in the front. But I still need these to be exactly the same size. And I don't want to have to weld the next set together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, this snowman by going up here to the plus, And I'm going to make two of them. Okay. Now take the one and get it out of the way. Put it over there. We're not going to need that one right now. That's the back of your snowman. Put this one over here on the right side. And let's go ahead and go back to OK. And we're going to add the scallop circle that's the tummy of the snowman so you can see through to the Tic Tacs. So we're going to go to Add. And we're going to go to Pattern. And we're going to go to Shapes again. And we're going to scroll down to the scallop circles. It's after the regular circles. And you can use any of these would look cute. Even the little oval would look cute. The star would look cute. The star burst. This scallop looks kind of like a postage stamp. Right? They would all look cute. But let's see. I went with the 50. I went with this one. BA-A050 because it was just really kind of friendly for our, for our project. And there we have it. So we're going to make that one and a quarter inch. And it doesn't matter if I change this or this because remember... This button keeps the numbers in proportion. So here we go. We just move it down. If I hold my stylus there, it goes down really fast. And you can, I like the beeps. You can turn off the audible beeps. I personally like the little beeps. Keeps me on track. Okay, 1.25 or one and a quarter inches. So now we have a scalloped circle for one of our snowmen. So you might be thinking, 
we have to weld it. But no, if you were to actually take this and weld it, these two shapes would become one and we would actually go right back to having an outline. So we actually don't want to weld this, we want to group this. In other words, we want this to cut out like a hole and not to become part of the bigger shape. However, before we group it in the edit function, you know what we need to do. We're going to go edit, we're going to select, and this time just use this selection, the one on the left, and it just allows us to select part of the screen. That's why I put that little snowman over there. So we just want to select these objects over on this side. And now we want to align them again vertically like we did before. So click OK. Ob object Edit. Align. Vertical. Now, if you're not sure if that's down far enough, you know, or you might want to, you know, move it down further. Like, I want this circle to be in the middle of the tummy. So let me just unselect it. If you see that it's not quite in the middle of the tummy, like as far as this part of the circle, then you might want to move it down. And you can always do that, you know, move it down slightly by, nu by nudging it. But we're not going to have to do that because I think it looks really good. But this is where you would do that. Right here, even though it's already good, it's aligned, you might want to move it down a pixel. This is like, a, well, it would be a pixel if we're on the screen, but you know what I'm saying. It's like slightly, this is called nudging. And you want to just, you, that's how you can move something tiny bit. Now, I, but I don't want to do that. I want to go back to, I want to keep selecting those. Why they were selected, just select those again. I want to group these objects together because, I'll show you why. Select these again. They're already aligned. Object edit. Don't hit the weld button. You'll be sorry. It'll, it'll, it'll make this little circle disappear that you just added. And you'll be like, I just, what happened to it? It welded together, which it was doing its job, right? We want to use this button here called the group button. It's the button that looks like, I'm saying this because my audio gets transcribed by artificial intelligence. Okay, so this audio is going to get transcribed. And I was going to say, the group button is the button with the circle and the triangle inside of a square. Okay, that's what the group button is. Just making sure you know that. So now the reason we use that and we say, okay, is now look, we have this, we can move it around, we can duplicate it, etc. Now, if we were to try to save paper, let's take this back of the snowman, go to object edit and go to the rotate. And what you're going to be able to do is rotate it. So one is upside down. It just saves a little paper. So this, we're just going to rotate it. You could rotate it 180 degrees or flip it around, but you need to do that. Go 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And look at that, we're saving paper. Now don't overlap them, but just sort of save paper. Like you see how there's just a little bit less paper used when you have one upside down. All right, we're ready to cut our snowman. Oops, now let's use that nudge tool. We're gonna use the nudge because we don't want them to be on top of each other. Nudge, or not, it's, it's actually, I'm calling it nudge. I'm nudging like a verb. I'm moving something away from the other one. All right, we're ready. Are you ready? We are ready. Let's go and cut this snowman. We're going to click OK, OK, OK. You just got to say OK a few times till you get to the cut button. And then you say cut, and then we're going to say start. Now, my, my mat is already loaded. If you want to load your mat, you're going to go to this button here to load the mat. And I'm going to hit start. My mat's already loaded, but I want to show you what I'm doing here. So I'm going to turn on my light now. It doesn't matter if I turn on my light because I'm not scanning anything for this project. Everything's coming out of the machine. So I normally tell you when we're scanning, don't let the light go shining in your machine when you're scanning. But we're not scanning, we're cutting. And I like to just, because the mats not, aren't always very sticky, I like to give this paper a little rub while it's cutting my snowman. So what's happening right now is that the first object I put on the mat is cutting first because that's the order it's cutting in. The second object is cutting next. And then it'll cut out the middle. And it's using the auto blade technology, meaning it's determining the depth of the mat. And then it's determining the depth of the paper in relation to the mat. And that's what it's doing. So if you don't have an auto blade, I'll stop right now and tell you. So this one here, this is an auto blade. It's because the SDX models have auto blade. You don't need to set the blade depth. If you're using a brother scan and cut CM model right now, you may have had it for a while. You can still do this project just like I'm showing you. The difference for doing this project is that you're going to use a blade depth of four because I'm using Stampin' Ups. I'm using Stampin' Up cardstock. You can get all this stuff at my store, some of the stuff. A lot of the stuff I'm using is retired, but this is not retired. Stampin' Up 12 by 12 cardstock, basic white. It's a good, it's a good thickness for this project. And 
The blade depth would be four for using the basic white, the regular basic white, but we do make thick basic white as well. And then in that case, the blade depth would be a, a five for regular cardstock. All right, so I'm gonna go bend. You can either bend the mat to get the objects off the mat like so, or you can just get under there with your spatula. And that keeps it from ripping. So there we have the cute little snowman and we will go ahead and assemble what we have so far. And then we're gonna save these little pieces for our, our other projects. And now I'm gonna put in a piece of black for our hat and we'll do the hat in a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to make a hat. So we'll put that there. All right, so now, okay, we have room. We have this, let's put this here and here. And we're gonna get a pack of Tic Tacs. So my friends are going on a mission trip and I'm gonna send them some Tic Tacs along with them because they're going to a hot location. And although they are, they did ask me if they can take some of my Hershey nugget treats and some, because they love my candy and they're gonna take some lip balm and um, paper purses. But I thought this would be great for the tropics where they're doing the mission trip because these would like, they, they won't melt, you know? And it's, even though it's winter time, there's still places where it's not winter time. <laughs> I mean, it's winter time everywhere, but it's, there's places where it doesn't get cold is what I should say. So here's what you wanna do first. You might have to tilt the Tic Tacs or something, right? You wanna put them under there and you may have to like, you know, tilt them a little bit to get them to get them to hide that little part. So you wanna get that right sort of like that, you know, hide, hide the little, so it might be at a little bit of an angle is what I'm saying, you know, when you were done with it. So anyway, just put a little bit of adhesive on there. I used to put more adhesive. Now I'm just kinda, I'm over it. I'm just sticking it on lightly because all the kids do when they open this up is rip them open and start eating the Tic Tacs. They love it. I mean, people love these and they're really good craft fair item. I just, actually my last craft fair, these would have sold like really well because they always have in the past, but I didn't have time to make them because I was busy making a class called Making and Selling Crafts and I should have put this in the class, but it's in, this is in some of my scan and cut courses. I did add it as a video. So now the only trick now for the back of this is to put the back on to make sure it's even, you can stand these up together, right? To make sure they're the same height. That way someone can stand them up if they want to. So again, just put some adhesive on the back like that. I'm just using Seal Plus adhesive. It's great adhesive, really good. And I'm gonna go like this with my hands. I'm gonna put this here like this so that they're both the same height, right? I'm, move, I'm putting my fingers like so. You could tell I've done so many of these before. This is one of the crafts that I came up with like originally, you know, and then I've, I've had it so probably on my channel for in different variations for several years. And I think it just keeps on getting cuter, <laughs> actually. And then, and sometimes we've used different sizes and I used to use different stamps and hats, but now we're gonna make our own hat. So that's how to get it to line up. And it, it's already cute, right? It's already cute the way it is, but let's make it cuter by having a hat. All right, now let's, let's say hi to those who are here watching and please do a thumbs up if you're liking what you see so far on this video. Take the time to do a little thumbs up. All right, like it, let's turn this off. So, a couple things before we go on. We, let's, before we do any hat, you definitely don't want to do this again. I mean, you, of course you want to do this again. It was fun. But what I mean is, why would you do this again when you can save this? Right? Now, you might be thinking, but Paper Chef, why would I save it? Shouldn't I get more on the mat first? But first, before we get any more on the mat, I would say do a couple things. I would probably do this. I would probably edit, select all, and I would group these together right? Before I get any more of these on the mat. And I'm probably going to save it just to be safe. And then I'll duplicate it once I open it back up. So what I would do at this point is I have this group of objects, right? You know, and but I'm like, you know what, I just did all this work before I start duplicating and seeing how many I can fit on the mat. Let me just go ahead and save this. Now you can save it to your machine to canvas workspace. That's your account that you've registered your machine. Watch my tutorials to figure out how to do that. Or you could save it to the USB stick, we're going to save it to the machine. And it's going to say it includes a group pattern, cannot ungroup once you save it. Well, we don't want to ungroup it because we it already works. So it's okay. We're going to click OK and we're going to save it. Now, let's, let's before we make the hat and everything, let's just talk about getting this back, making more of these and all that stuff. So we got, we go, we're going to delete all patterns. You're like, what? You just deleted everything? Yes, because we've saved it. So you open up your machine. It's the next day and you're like, I want to make some more Tic Tac Snowmen and you're gonna to go to retrieve data, and you're going to go to your machine, and you're going to go to the bottom of all the files that you saved, and there is, there's the snowman, okay? 
Now, now you can like do other things to it, like edit. Oop, it did ungroup it, didn't it? It said it wasn't gonna ungroup it, but it did. So let's go, let's group it again. Object edit and group. The reason we're grouping it again is because now, while we're up here, go to the little plus sign and make four of these. Because look at that, look how cool that is. Four of these and click okay. And you're like, well, that's a hot mess. Isn't that a hot mess? Yes, they're all overlapping. And if you cut this out, you would have a little sliver that looks like the crescent of the moon. This would all be a big hot mess. They would cut out right on top of each other. But not when you use the auto layout button. Auto layout. And if you're like, what is she talking about? Hit the first button and it will do the best thing it can do to fit these all in the map for you. Save you lots of time. And it's saying there's not enough space on the map, but we know there really is. So we might have to delete just one because it's saying that it can't fit all three. So let's try it again. We're giving it the opportunity to turn some of them sideways if it needs to. See how it did that? And then the last one, we might have to manually put it on the mat ourselves by like, let's see, edit, make one more. And if it still doesn't fit, we can make this one. If we want, if we're really, really up for it, we can make it slightly smaller to make it fit or just get rid of it all together. So you see what I'm saying? This is how to save paper. And you can use it for something else. It might not fit your Tic Tac exactly, but you know what I'm saying? Like when we get everything that we want, now when we save it again, it will overwrite this. Next time we have a little template that we can use to make all our little Tic Tacs. All right, so do we have that part? And if there are any questions, I'm gonna do the hat now, let's see. Hello, Margo from California. Linda from Stamp Cut and Create. B. Pre from Warner Robins, Georgia. Hello, I'm going back to the beginning. I'm deleting everything. Hello, Janet from Soggy North Florida. Hello, Janet. And hello, Brooke from Plant City, Florida. And Nola is supposed to be eating dinner, but instead is watching this. You're not getting a lecture from me. I love when you craft instead of eat. No, I'm just kidding. We got to eat too. We're going to make a hat. We're going to go to pattern. And before I know this part is going to take a little more concentration. So let me finish saying hi to you guys. But I'm going to be going to this icon one next. So follow me along and make sure if you have your machine on that you follow and you write down where you find these icons. Because you're going to be using, believe it or not, a flower pot and a cup and saucer to make the hat. And you're like, what is she talking about? Yes, we're going to weld the shapes together because we don't want to have to go use the software right now. We want to be able to make this cute little hat right from the machine. So we got, we said hi to Brooke and Nola, who's eating, supposed to be eating, and Kathy from Backyard Stamper, and Luis from Ontario, Canada. We're going to this little one here that has the clock. And so Luis is from Canada, Ontario, and so is Lisa from Ontario. You guys could be buds. And Phil's looking forward to the project. Hello, Phil. Anna from Victoria, Australia. See the little clock in the Eiffel Tower? That's the one we want. Hello, Pat Williams. Hello, Anne from Nashua, New Hampshire, and Jean. I'll say hi to anyone else later because we're going to move on. Now, in this little icon with the clock, it's like the household items. So you're going to scroll down, and you're going to go to the flower pot. So at this point, I'm going to actually write this down so that I can put this in my notes later. This is the flower pot. A, and you're like, what is she on about? We're going to make a hat out of the flower pot? Yes, because I wanted this hat to be cute. And yes, I could have taken a rectangle to make the hat and a oval, but I just thought the hat would look cuter if it had a cute little angle to it. So I found this flower pot and thought, okay, let's use the flower pot. Now don't do anything to the flower pot size. Just go ahead and say, okay, and get the biggest part of the flower pot. It's gonna give you different parts. The, the reason you could put the different parts on the mat is because you could cut them in different colors and do the layering, right? So the flower pot and then the top of the flower, you know, this rim. We don't want the rim here. We just want the flower pot. So we want the A and we want to stick it on the mat and just click set. So now you have the makings of a hat, right? Even this would be cute with a rectangle, but it still wouldn't be as cute as a hat. I like the little like curled edge. So what I did next is I went and added, well, let's before we add, just cause you're like, this does not look like a hat to me. All right, before we even add another shape, let's go ahead and edit the shape and rotate it. Object edit. Rotate, rotate. Now does it look like a hat? Are we happy? That would already be a cute snowman hat, just like that. So now you can see that the flower pot looks like a hat. 
So now the next part shouldn't be as obscure. We're going to click OK, and we're going to click OK. So now we're going to add the saucer from the cup and saucer to make the hat. So this part is saying, do you want any more parts? No. We see it. We don't want any more parts. So just go back to you want a new pattern. Go to pattern, pattern, right? The little icons again, the second one, the little clock in the Eiffel Tower. Okay, and now the cup and saucer. Go down to the second page. And now we want, I'm going to stop and write this one. We want AR dash E017. See, some of you guys I know are listening while you craft, because I know I do that. Actually, I do more listening to crafts than I do watching crafts because I have to keep on crafting, right? So while I'm crafting, I listen to podcasts, I listen to crafts, and, you know, so you might be listening, and then there's something to write down. So we want this one, AR-E017. Now, you can resize it here or later, and we can go ahead and do it here because I already know what size we're going to need. What did I write? I wrote flower pot. I wrote 1.25, so let's see if that works out right. So I put down, make the height of the flower pot. Oh, wait, actually, cancel, cancel. Sorry. Let's go get, we need we need just the part. Before we do it, let's go do it on the, on the machine. So go down, because we only want part of the flower pot. So click OK. We want this part, A. That's the part we want to resize. Just the A, not the whole saucer and cup, because otherwise we would have had the whole cup and saucer. So we want AR-E017. A, part A. Now, that's the part we want to make. Oh, sorry. Just put it on the mat, and then we'll resize it. All right, so we are going to put this over the top of that. I hope this makes sense. It's selected right now. And now we're going to make this bigger so that it overlaps this. This is on the front. This is on the back. So what we want to do is take this shape here. Let's put the shape over here so you understand. We're going to go to Edit. Object edit, resize, that's the first one. And now we want it to be 1.25, one and a quarter. And I experimented with this. And I actually had a really big hat at first that was too big. See, here's what we're doing. And this is, it worked out really well, but this hat was like too big for this, for the in proportion to my snowman. But what we're doing is we're taking this really cool saucer because it looks like a hat bottom. And we're making it 1.25. Okay. Don't worry about the height. I mean, don't worry about the width. That is the height. The height is 1.25. The width is, just leave the width. Don't worry about it. It's default. It'll stay in proportion. So click OK. So you know what to do next, right? We're going to overlap. We're putting this onto that. Now, if we were to cut this out right now, I know I've said it before, but you're going to end up with a big hot mess. You'd have one, two, three, four, five, whatever, a whole bunch of shapes. So we need to weld these shapes together, but not until we do what we do best because we're professional crafters. And we're going to align the shapes by selecting the shapes, selecting them all, right? The selection tool, click OK. And then we're going to go to Object Edit, Align. That's this button here. And where? how do we align it? Watch the little crosshairs. We align it vertically. OK, we align it vertically. Did you saw? I hope you saw that they just moved. They moved slightly. Now they're perfectly aligned. Now we can weld. And now it won't cut out as several separate shapes. When we weld it, it'll cut out as one shape. But you're like, Paper Chef, like, that's huge compared to the, to the um, snowman, right? The snowman was only a, a couple inches, and now it takes up half the mat. Yes, but I was trying to get this to be in proportion before we resize it. I wanted this to be welded before we resize it. So hopefully that makes sense. And I tried a two-inch hat at first, two inches high. It's way too big. We can agree. Don't, we can't agree on that. It's way too big. But when I tried two inches, it still was like, this is cute, but it was still kind of too big for the snowman. See, this is what I'm going to show you, right? It's just, it's not too big. I mean, it just was a little too big. It would have worked and even smaller would work. But what I, what I came to, you know, experiment with is a height of one and three quarter inch, 1.75 was a good, a good compromise here for the good size of the hat. So we'll write, I rewrote that down. So. I'm going to go ahead and write the width only because if you guys are watching this later, again, the width doesn't matter because we kept it. It stays in proportion no matter what. When you have an object that you're using from within those icons, you see how this doesn't even give you the option? You, you pretty much, when you change the height, the width changes. 
All right, now let's to save paper. We'll go ahead and put that up in the corner. You might be wondering why I never used that corner. I tied it. My, my right side of my mat is stickier than my left side. So I just like to put things on the right side. But you can put them wherever you want when you cut them. Click OK, OK, OK a few times, right? And then you'll go to Please Select and click Cut. And now we're cutting out our little hat. We're going to click Start. Whoops, start. And then we'll, we'll glue the hat onto the snowman. Hey, I see that Kathy found another friend from New Hampshire. Isn't that nice? So Kathy from Backyard Stamper. And Anne, you can follow Kathy on her own YouTube page. And she can, you can like meet another New Hampshire friend. All right, so I'm going to take, you know how to take this off, right? We're going to do this. Now, I found, there is holly, and I'm going to show you the holly on the machine. But I thought this was cuter. I found that I had this stuff in my bucket of crafty goodness. Let me find my bucket of crafty goodness. Here we go. One of my, one of my many buckets of crafty goodness. This is my, some of it's my Christmas stuff. And I have these little pieces of holly. And I was trying to find a hat that was big enough for them. So I hit, they, they came in a bigger package, so I took them apart. And, and who knows where I originally got these. We're crafters, we have all kinds of stuff. We never know where we got it from. But these, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna poke a little hole. You can poke a hole with your take the pick tool or I'm just punching a hole and sticking my little holly through there. But if you wanna make holly from the scan and cut, have at it. I'm making this more of a 3D item because I think it's just more fun. Now you could take these holly leaves, they were recently on clearance. Glue some of these little gold leaves from there from Stampin' Up. You can make a different kind of, you could make a little winter hat and put a little pom-pom on the winter, winter hat. You can tie bells on your snowman. Oop, that's a paper clip. How did that get in there? All kinds of trinkets. I mean, just have fun with this. All right, so now we're gonna take this and jazz it up some more. So what I did first was I put, I found these little gems. I don't know what they're called, just black matte dots or something. These are from Stampin' Up. And you could also cut coal out, make yourself some coal. Oh, and if you use the internet, of course, take my um, Canvas Workspace A to Z course. If you want to take a course that shows you all about how to get SVGs off the internet, you can... You can probably find lots of snowman faces and stuff. So I'm going to put little, little dots on there. Okay, next, that you're not going to believe where I got the nose, but those of you that are watching my YouTube series and you see these scissors, I told you the scissors would make great noses. So let's make a nose out of the scissors and then I just colored it a little bit. So this is a die. This is actually a metal die. Now, of course, you can take a triangle and then you can mess with the proportions of your triangle and do all that business, right? I mean, have at it if you'd like. But Paper Chef spends time on things that if she already has, she doesn't like start a new project. So anyway, I don't want to speak about myself in third person, but if you know my YouTube channel, I just, I use the stuff I already have. I've already made the, a bunch of these because I've been working on this tutorial for this Crafting With You series all month long. And I have lots of these little scissors. And some of them I even made on adhesive paper. But I was telling you when I, oh, these would make great carrot noses. But I did not know how true that statement was until I played around and I was like, that's the perfect size nose. Okay, now what about the eyes? Well, I'm a fan of Dyson. Oh, I also thought it would be cute to put sunglasses on them. I had some sunglass stickers and mustaches, but I didn't put that, I didn't try that yet. I might do that for the kiddos. Then I had some little Google eyes. I did have some Google eyes. There you go. I'm a fan of a, what's called, the store called like Daiso and they have all this like cute stuff. So these were like when I was in Japan. I mean, but you, you know how to find wiggle eyes anywhere at any craft store. Let's just see what, let's just see what sizes they have. Here's a good one. We'll make, we'll put big eyes on this one. Big eyes, baby's got big eyes. All right, put the little sticker on there. All 
Okay, good. And we'll put the hat. You got to do the face first. Trust me, because I tried to do the face last, and then, like, I put the hat down too far, and I couldn't fit the eyes. I'm like, my snowman has no eyes. Oh, in case you missed it, I probably forgot the step of... I had colored... This was a paper, like a, a paper from petal, like a petal pink color, and I needed it to be a color of a snowman's nose, so I took the pumpkin pie blend and colored it. See, I mean, you might have seen me coloring, but that's what I was doing. So now we got to put this little guy right there. And we're just going to put some Seal Plus on there. Okay. This stuff's really strong. Put it at an angle. And now we have some cute little ribbon. So if you see how it's coming together. Oh, I like the big eyes better. What do you guys think? I didn't even realize they weren't the same eyes until I put them next to each other. This ribbon is retired, but just use some cute ribbon. I, the reason I like this ribbon is it is it frays. And sometimes you want ribbon to fray, and sometimes you don't. In this case, the ribbon frays all over the place. And I was thinking that the the snowman, or the, the scarf, I mean, from the, the, the uh, bear might work too. There's a really cute scarf inside the bear, very cute bundle. So maybe you could stamp and cut out some of those scarves. We, you can cut those out with your scan and cut. See how much it frays? It just comes undone. Like on the ends, I love this ribbon. It's called curly ribbon, so it retired, but it's real red curly ribbon and it frays. And then the, you know, you could use the little scarves from the little bear. And so, yep, yeah, so who said we'd have a dapper snowman? You got, you got, yep, dapper Dan. <laughs> Dapper Dan the Snowman. Okay, let me show you where to get the holly. And that is, that's all for the project. I mean, that's, that's easy now. I'm going to show you where to, you could get like a triangle for the nose, where you could get the holly. And if you want to get circles, this is just circles. So if you don't, you want to make, you don't want to make your own eyes. I thought it'd be cute to just use any little gems for the eyes, but especially these bigger gems. Like I had some of these bigger gems would look, which could look good on eyes. I don't know what these came from. So if you're going to do eyes, make them bigger than the mouth. But if you're going to use the pieces from the machine, I'll just show you where to find some circles that you can cut out. But first, I want to do the holly. So let me turn this off. And we also got to save the hat. So there's a couple more steps before I show you what we made in part one of this project, or in part one of Christmas. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's see, select the next part. What's that? Select the next part. No, no. We don't want to select the next part. Oh, boy, I might have lost it. Yep, I think I lost it. Yikes. I, shouldn't, I should have said finish. Okay, but if you... I've already saved my hat, so you know how to save it from before, but see, um, I, before you hit, don't, make sure you don't say select the next part. You have to say finish, and you can save your hat and then put the hat there. So we'll put the notes in there about how to make the hat again. It was, it was just this. I mean, real quick, just because I lost it. So da, 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 da. I just want to get to the point of where I have to say, Add, pattern, pattern, doot, doot. Okay, this is important, the part where it says finish. Okay, set. See, now save. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't hit the add button again like I did. Save it. I mean, save it, of course, after you weld the hat together. But what I'm saying is, don't go adding something because it's going to say, if you do go add something, you have to say finish. You know, so you could save every step of the way and then do all your stuff. Okay, so you got that. Now, what I want to show you is the holly for your hat or just holly in general or, you know, some Christmassy things. Go here to, it, you would think it's under the snowflakes, but it wasn't. I'm thinking it might have been under here with the little rocking horse. Let's try that. Yeah, the rocking horse. So go to the rocking horse one and you got the little holly. And you can put the holly on your hat. But I just don't think it looks as cute as my holly. That's 3D. So you might want to just get some little stickers. But if you want to make this, just go ahead. And you're going to have to add each little leaf separately, though. Right? You can you can resize it later. but Or you can resize it at this point. You know, the only problem is they're each a little bit slightly different. So you have to sort of add them. And when you do resize something like this project, you want to... That one just added two berries. It's, you want to resize everything at once. So if you're like, that's huge, like that's really huge, Holly. Well, we know what to do. 
You got, well, we're not going to cut. We're going to go edit, select all, and, you know, make it the size you want it, like whatever size. Well, maybe let's, let's group it first and then resize it. All right, group, and do, 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 do. You know what I mean? Like, make it all, like, really tiny holly. See how small it will go? Ooh, not that small. I mean, probably half an inch, I'm thinking. Because the hat's two inches high, right? Now, although mine is probably an inch high of a two-inch hat, so you could probably get away with... You could probably get away with an inch high, Holly. Even on a... The bigger, the easier it is for you. Right? So that's just an idea. I can play around with it and let you know in the future. But let me... Maybe, maybe during Christmas Crafting Part 3, I can find out if that was a good size, Holly. So bottom line is that's how you get extra little bits for your, and I'm going to also show you the carrot, but I, do, I like my carrot better from the scissors, but you might be thinking, well, I want to make this whole thing from the scan and cut. Okay, fine. You want to make the whole thing from the scan and cut. Okay, pattern without having to go to the software. Go to the one with the little fruit with the apple and the donut, and there's a carrot. So you can make a carrot nose by just clicking okay and making yourself a cute little carrot nose. This is a cute nose. I mean, it's rounded. And you can put this layer on it, too, if you want, to make it look like a real carrot. But just that is fine, this little part. Cut it out in orange, and you have yourself a carrot nose. Okay? So that's all, that's, that's all for the machine. So now we know how to save it, and we're good. So what we made in part one is... And did I say hi to Carol from Indiana yet? Don't know if I'm missing anybody, and I'd like your comment in. In part one of... The 12 days of Christmas crafting. This is what I went through. And we're not always going to use the scan and cut in the 12 days of Christmas crafting. Sometimes we're just going old school and we're just folding paper. Like in the case of day one, when, we, when I showed you how to make these boxes. Boy, I think I better raise my camera up here because you're like, whoa, that's pretty, that's pretty um, big box. All right, so we started out, I taught you how to use a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and fold it in a certain way. And then you're going to take that same paper fold, the next one the same way, and then the third one the same way, and you're going to interlock the papers. No glue is needed, and you have yourself a gorgeous giant craft box to put something in. So that's a 12 by 12. But that's just not a good ornament size. Like, let's, let's face it, right? This is a good ornament size. So this is a 6 by 6 paper times 3. Six, three this is Merry, Bold, and Bright, which I found out last night that it, we're already out of it. We don't even have any more. I was telling you guys where to buy it, and they wouldn't even have any. But this is a little piece of ribbon on there to make your ornament. Three pieces of Merry, Bold, and Bright. And then I made, so that was six by six paper, and then I made some with three by three paper, which are pretty, I want to say useless. They're cute, but they, you can't, they don't hold the darn thing. I mean, maybe a mint, but I doubt it. I think, I couldn't even get a candy cane in there. And I think I tried to get a mint in there, and I, I couldn't bear to get it shut even with a mint in there. That's why they're empty. But four inches worked out okay. Four inches is a really good size to be super cute for an ornament and super cute to put a craft inside. So that's four inches. And then that's another four inch one with a ribbon. And then these are some more six inch ones. These all have treats in them. So I'll probably be sending some of these on my friend on her trip. I just hope Customs doesn't like start trying to open them and ruin my boxes because Customs is never gonna be able to figure out how to get them back together if they open these up. But any, anywho, that is how to make that's what we did in part one. Here's another one. And in part two, we made the Tic Tac Snowman. And I'm not even sure what I'm doing for part three yet. It's just going to be, like, really fun. I mean, we could do this. I could do it, like, 365 days a year. There's so many things you can make for Christmas. Stocking stuffers, right? Everything in this 12 days of Christmas is definitely 3D, though. 3D items. So I hope you enjoyed this project and that you're going to give these Tic Tac Snowmen a try. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.